what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna open up Skype here and I'm gonna call our good friend Jeff Ponder, uh, who's a Brain Trust's uh, director of all things video. And Jeff is over in the edit suite uh, doing work on a project, but we're just gonna kind of spy on him for a second. So I'm gonna give Jeff a call here over Skype. Hopefully Jeff answers and doesn't hang up on us. Um, okay, looks like he's joining the call here, getting his video going. What's up, Jeff? How's it going? All right, so now Skype has a call. So the question is, how do we get that in to Pro 7? Well, the easiest answer right now is Skype's NDI feature, okay? So you can, uh, if you go to Skype's preferences, under calling, advanced, you're gonna see there's a new switch here for NDI. Now we've got this turned on, you're gonna wanna make sure it's on, okay? And what this does is this actually publishes out Jeff's feed as an NDI IP video feed. And Pro can handle that, no problem. So if I come back to Pro, preferences, video input, we're gonna add one more. We're gonna call it Jeff, just so I've got that. And then under video source, you're gonna see all of a sudden on my local machine, I've got some Skype things going on, okay? The one that says local is Skype's local feed. So that's actually again the FaceTime camera because that's what Skype is sending to Jeff, all right? Active speaker, that's a switched feed. If you had four or five people on the call, you know how Skype puts them to the front whenever they talk? That's what that feed, it kind of auto switches. But you'll notice there's one here with a little ID and it's a string of random digits. That's Jeff. Okay, now how do I know that that's Jeff? Well, I know because he's the only one on the call. Um, if you log in with a particular Skype name, it'll put that Skype name there. Um, but for some people, you may find it just puts that random digits. Um, now, every time they call in, it might be a different set of random digits. So before you take them live, you're just gonna wanna confirm you've grabbed the right input. So we're gonna choose this here. This is how we know what Jeff is. Close this up, come back to our video input, and now we're gonna add Jeff. And we're gonna make sure, again, behavior, foreground so that he shows up. Now, if I just take that, there's Jeff. Jeff's on the live stream now. You can see his audio's coming in. Now, one thing you may notice, Jeff's audio is only coming down the left channel. That's because Skype only publishes a mono audio feed. How do we fix that? Well, if we right click on this, go to the inspector, it's gonna bring up a way to deal with Jeff. Now, there's some nice things we could do here. Under effects, we could add color effects. So if I wanted to tweak uh, the exposure of Jeff's shot, I could do that. Really nice to be able to add a couple of effects if I needed to. But under audio, channel routing, you're gonna see I have the ability to route all the audio channels of that NDI feed to a different destination in Pro. So what I wanna, wanna do is make sure that Jeff's channel one, that's the one we know is coming in, goes to both Pro channel one and Pro channel two. Basically, we're gonna put his feed down both sides, a nice full mono uh, track there so he doesn't sound like he's off to the left in our stream. Close this, refire it, and now you can see you've got audio coming in on both channels. So now Jeff is full mono, ready to go. We can, we're gonna be able to hear him whenever we take him. So there's Jeff. I can bounce between Jeff and me uh, just as I would punching through different things in the switcher, okay? Uh, I can change the transition just like I would any other slide or cue element, okay? I can dip to me here and it's ready to go. Um, let's say I wanted next to build a two up pip with me and Jeff having a conversation together. Well, I can do that. If I go to the uh, edit mode, maybe I'll just, uh, maybe I'll just duplicate this slide and work off of it here. So I'll move these over, shrink them up. Maybe that'll be for me. So now I'm gonna take that input and it's drop shadow rectangle, copy them, paste them. We're gonna move them over here. We're gonna get them resized. I'll stretch Jeff out, give him, he's the featured guest. I'll give him a little more screen space. Then I'm gonna select that, that shadow rectangle and drop it over. And then what I'm gonna do is on this video input, I'm just gonna make sure to come over here and say, have it as input two. The one on the left, input one. The one on the right, input two. So if I come back to my show here and I trigger this slide, you're gonna see here Jeff and I are live at the same time. So if I were doing this in a narrow thing, I'd, I'd frame myself up in the camera and I'd know that Jeff is right there and I could say, what's up Jeff, how's it going? Jeff could talk back to me. We could do a whole Skype conversation, right? Great way to add guests. And I could build more than one of these 
and just change the inputs. So if I wanted to swap Jeff and I, I would just duplicate this slide, swap the inputs on those objects, right? Then I could have a whole setup. Um, if I were, yeah, so I can go in here and uh, duplicate this slide and just change this one to input two, this one here to input one. So if I come over and I fire it, now you'll see me in the wider screen and, and Jeff on that side, okay? Um, might be helpful to you as you're going to give these slides a label, All right? So I might give it a label that says Jeff and host. That way I'll know what that is. Maybe I'll give this one a label that says host and Jeff. That'll help me remember who's on what side. So now I know if I toggle us back and forth, that'll work fine. I can take me back to the thing and we're kind of bouncing around. We could cut our whole show this way, all right? Then I could bring in any other playback. If I bring in a video here and I play that video, there it goes, it's playing its audio. Wow, wasn't that a great video clip? Thanks so much for joining us on our stream. Thanks so much for joining us today, taking a look at how you could use Pro 7 in a live streaming environment. Hopefully this inspires you to build some of your own content and take a look at the tools you've been using in a live world. Think about how you could pivot them and use them in a virtual world. Definitely hit us up in the comments below if you've got questions or thoughts and uh, we'll see you again soon.